Right now we are witnessing a silver paradigm shift. Silver buyers will no longer be guys talking about Austrian economics or momentum monkeys trying to make a quick buck trading metals. Soon it will be wide-eyed panic buying as people wake up to the fact that everything that they have ever worked for is being destroyed by the massive money creation of the world's central banks. Once people see that the only answer that bankers have is to print more money, and that the only answers politicians have is to spend more money, they will see that there is no safe place on earth to store their wealth other than real tangible assets. And no tangible asset shines brighter than silver. I predict that silver, at one point, will not be available for any dollar price. So you can throw away all your 50, 100, 500, or 960 dollar price targets because society will finally see the enormity of the fraud in the silver market. Once this fraud is exposed, no person on earth would dare let go of their silver for fiat paper money. Sure, a couple ounces might be available at the local shop, but the vast majority of silver markets will be as barren as the shelves of a post-collapse Soviet Union grocery store. This global mentality shift in asset values will lead to a paradigm shift where the world no longer wants debt money. Only real money will do in the new silver paradigm. Here are the 11 mentality shifts that I believe silver investors will go through as we enter this silver paradigm. Number one, physical investors who've been stacking physical silver will be stunned by the sudden appreciation. It will be akin to someone winning the lottery. They will be shocked by the enormity of their newfound wealth, which occurs at the exact same time the economy becomes an absolute horror show. A shift in the perception of wealth will confirm that they are holding something truly precious. The years of being told that they were crazy for buying silver will finally give away to, you were right. After the shock wears off, the newly minted wealthy will seek to make the most of this once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. These men were astute enough to buy physical silver when everybody said that they were nuts. They are certainly not now going to give up what they have for some dirty dollars that they didn't want years ago. They will wait for something much, much better. They will not immediately seek opportunities to invest their new wealth in because the final throes of the debt-based economy will be horrific. No one will invest when it is not certain what will happen to humanity. They will have no choice but to wait until the act plays out and the music stops. The second mentality shift will be long-term paper investors who have been sitting on the sidelines. They will rush to buy physical silver this time around. I cannot tell you how many people I know that have been literally dragging their feet buying physical silver. You know who you are. They understand why to buy, but it's just so hard for them to pull the trigger. Unfortunately, it will not be until much higher prices that they will finally pull the trigger. When they do buy, they will be joining a fast and furious rush as those fence sitters finally panic for the exits. They will see that Europe's debt problem is actually the world's debt problem. We cannot solve debt with more debt. They will see that no paper asset is safe with the amount of money printing that will occur in the next round of too big to fails. This time, the too big of fails won't be some puny billion dollar company. It will be trillion dollar nations. I have said that there are quadrillions in paper assets and yet only a few hundred million ounces of physical silver on the market. Right now, there's probably less than 1% invested in silver. What will the price be? if it went back to the 15% of the population like it did in the 1980s. Also, those paper investors who have been sitting on the sidelines have already been burned by the MF Global scandal. No longer will they trust those markets anymore, and only physical metal will do. Number three, silver retailers will be stunned as people throw their fiat dollars for real tangible metals. Some bullion retailers will celebrate and sell everything that they have at higher and higher prices. They will expect to buy it back at a lower price, but this time, instead of correcting, it keeps going up. After a short while, these former precious metal players will see that the world has changed and that they were on the wrong side of the trade. They will then become one of those panic buyers that they once celebrated selling to. Number four, the smart silver retailer will see a mentality shift of the silver buyers and take the silver off the market. It will be one of wide-eyed sudden panic that people's entire life savings are at risk and that they need to buy silver or any other physical asset for that matter. These new panicked buyers will not be letting go of their silver anytime soon because they will no longer trust the dollar, the stock market, the banks, or the government. The smart silver retailer will now see that the real money is not in selling the metal, but in holding the metal. The longer that they hold it, the more that they may never sell that metal for paper again. They will join the rest of the strong-handed investors that will not sell until a new monetary paradigm is established, or they can leverage their silver directly for other income-producing assets. The smart silver retailer will quit all their advertising, fire all their employees, shut down the vault, and wait. Number five, the momentum monkeys who play the paper markets on real assets will seize upon the new mentality to drive up paper prices higher as they smell blood in the silver short water. Hedge funds will jump all over this market as they seek to squeeze every dollar out of the silver market. Vast paper wealth will be made in very short time. These momentum monkeys will fail to see that they were right on the trade, but wrong on the vehicle. 
the paper market will cheat them of their ultimate reward of wealth. The mentality shift in asset values will send real assets soaring at the same time all paper asset markets fail. Even if the momentum monkeys are right on their long silver bet, there is nothing stopping the COMEX from changing the rules for paper traders capping their gains. There is nothing stopping a failure of their brokerage account like MF Global or their bank as the paper market sees up. There is nothing stopping people from not accepting their paper winnings for real physical silver. There is nothing stopping the very dollars that they won from being right on the bet from not having any value at all. Number six, will JP Morgan end up being the ultimate silver buyer? Although JP Morgan has long been accused of being a massive short, in the final act, I do not expect JP Morgan to fall on the sword to defend a failing system. JP, along with many other banks, know full well the reality of the physical silver market. They have been perpetuating this fraud on a massive scale for years. They have kept regulators at bay by having their boys actually becoming the regulators. They know full well that they're trading 100 paper ounces to every one physical ounce. They're doing this because it's easy money to be made right now. During this silver paradigm shift, they will change with the wind and be the first in line for the real metal that they are in control of. These bankers will most likely shift their losing silver short positions onto some other shell company, pension fund, Federal Reserve, or most likely the taxpayers. These former silver shorts could ride the physical market all the way up. Number seven, institutional silver sellers will take their silver off the market. Most people do not realize that the recent depletion of silver on the COMEX has not been from people buying and taking delivery of physical silver. It has been from the cancellation of warrants of sellers no longer wishing to sell. This is a huge factor in the supply side of silver that will push the price up further. Number eight, miners will no longer seek to rush to push more real metal into the paper markets. If miners do sell their metal, they will most likely sell it in Asia where there will be huge demand for the metal. These miners will also see that they could have huge power like OPEC or De Beers and that there is great power in restricting the output of their product. Eric Sprott recently suggested to 11 of the top silver producers that they no longer sell their metal for paper dollars to put those dollars into a bank. That the best way to serve mining investors is for them to keep some of that metal in reserve as an asset instead of selling it out onto the market. This is especially important because most silver is merely a byproduct of mining of other metals. Smart miners would be wise to sell their zinc and other metals and keep their silver byproduct as profit. The silver would grow in value and not be taxed. Since they never sell it, there is no tax on its increasing in value. The increasing value would be monetized through the appreciation of the stock price as their balance sheet becomes more and more attractive. Number nine, corporations that were once comfortable with paper contracts guaranteeing delivery of their metal will want immediate physical delivery. Silver is such a strategic metal and is used in such small quantities. There are billions of dollars in corporate valuations at risk. If corporations cannot secure the basic components of their products, companies like Apple will whip out a big fat checkbook and only the real thing will do. Corporations will use their power to create a stockpile which will add to further demand. Most likely they will bypass the paper markets altogether and deal directly with the corporations who mine the silver. What a power shift that will be when tech giants have to go hat in hand to a small mining company to get their metal. Who knows, maybe these tech giants will use their wealth and buy the whole mining company. Number 10. Mining nations will make their move. So many mines are in nations that can and will, at the drop of the hat, nationalize mines. Nations will be facing tremendous social upheaval and will not hesitate to steal wealth from mines that rest in their lands. China was once the largest exporter of silver only five years ago and is now the largest importer of silver. Bolivia was on the verge of nationalizing its mines last May. They could now pull the trigger anytime that they want. Even in the United States, do you really think the thieves in Washington will not steal from the mines in America or the silver on the Comex? or SLV or even its citizens? For the record, I do not think that they will go for little guys like us. First, the majority of silver holders are smart enough to hide their silver beyond the sight of the federales. Second, the majority of silver owners I know are former military, gun owners who don't trust the government. They will never willingly give up their silver to anyone any more than they would give up their guns, food, or children. And if they won't give it up, what are they going to do? Send a SWAT team to grab some mercury dimes that may or may not be there? That will go over well. Finally, I believe that the government will have much, much bigger problems on its hands with riots, wars, and starvation to mount any effort of confiscation. And all of this assumes that these bozos in Washington and New York even understand how important silver is. Number 11. The anti-hegemon makes its move. 
I have written before that there is a group of nations that have not benefited from the current world order and are seeking a way to end it. They have been very wise not to agitate the mortally wounded beast of the Anglo-American Empire. They have been sitting on the sidelines, sharpening their knives, waiting for the right time to carve up their remains. China is leading these nations with their huge dollar reserves and opening up new markets like the Pan-Asian Gold Exchange and the Hong Kong Mercantile Exchange. These nations are using their paper assets to buy real assets all over the world. China is now on every continent buying oil, farms, and mines. They do not waste their wealth on frivolous showcase properties like the Japanese did when they bought golf courses or Manhattan skyscrapers. They are buying assets that will be the basis of real power in the new paradigm. All of these mentality shifts and real asset values will ultimately lead to a silver paradigm shift in power. Those that have real assets will be the ones making the rules. Those investors who have physical metal will finally have the upper hand over the paper manipulators. Those miners will finally become more valuable than frivolous companies like Facebook. Those nations that have natural resources will have the upper hand economically over nations that have nothing else to offer but debt and death. A shift in power will be from those who produce nothing to those that produce something. Reality will take hold and the day of something for nothing will be over for good. When this game changes, you will see that counterparty risk becomes the most important aspect of investing. Paper assets rely on another party to fulfill their end of the bargain. Real assets do not. When the world is panicking, it will be every man for themselves. There are many more powerful people higher up on the food chain that will get theirs before yours. A very wise man, Ponce, once said, If you don't hold it, you don't own it. When this shift happens, will you be in the right place at the right time?